Situated on the southwest tip of Ireland, where the Atlantic meets the unforgiving mountains and coastline, lies a landscape sculpted by wind and rain. A region known for its rugged beauty and abundant marine life. Fin whales, humpback whales, minke whales, dolphins and porpoises visit West Cork's coastal waters at different times throughout the year. Atlantic grey and harbour seals breed on the small islands dotted along the coast, while many bird species make the waters around the islands of West Cork a summer home prior to their autumn migration south over the equator. During the course of this series, I'll not only be looking at the marine life that lives here, I'll also be asking why is this region such a magnet for some of the world's most incredible marine species and how we can all do our part in conserving the environment here in what is a truly wild West Cork. Since the dawn of commercial whale watching in the 1950s, humpback whales have been wowing whale enthusiasts the world over. With their spectacular breeches, spy hops, tail slaps, and amazing bubble feeding, they are by far and away the most spectacular of all the great whales. Sightings of humpbacks off the Irish south coast are relatively few and far between, but as the season for their arrival approaches, whale enthusiasts, photographers and researchers ready themselves for encounters that may span only a few hours. Rarely do humpbacks remain in one area for any great length of time. Encounters with humpback whales along the south coast of Ireland are with animals coming in to feed on a variety of shoaling fish. They have been recorded feeding on sprat in West Cork using the bubble net feeding technique, first observed in Alaskan waters. A feeding behaviour usually associated with groups of whales, but individual animals have been recorded off Baltimore using this unusual method of feeding. Individual animals are recognised by the unique pattern of black and white markings on the underside of the tail. No two animals are the same. By photographing this pattern and comparing it with images taken during previous encounters, enthusiasts have established that many of the animals we see off the south coast of Ireland are regular visitors coming back year after year. Most commonly sighted feeding during the late autumn months, these animals are thought to be part of a northeastern Atlantic population of humpbacks that are moving south for the winter, stopping off along the south coast of Ireland to feed opportunistically. Occasional sightings off the south coast in January may suggest that some individuals, probably non-breeding stock, remain feeding into the spring months. My colleague Aidan Coffey an experienced marine mammal photographer has been taking pictures of great whales off West Cork for many years. His images of humpbacks have contributed significantly to our knowledge of the activity of these animals off the West Cork coast. I originally started going down to Baltimore uh, in West Cork in the early 1980s and at that stage nobody really mentioned whales at all. They, just, they, they were just something that weren't there. And I continued to go there, and uh, after, uh, as sort of uh, as the years progressed, whale watching became a, a bigger and bigger part of, of Baltimore, and various whale watching boats started operating. I started going out with them and started seeing the whales, and from there I developed an interest in photographing uh, all sorts of wildlife. And the whale operator boats were very good in that they'd call me and tell me when there was interesting wildlife around. And you'd, regularly got these calls, you know, have you got your camera? So that would mean you grab everything and you rush down to the harbour as fast as possible. Now one morning at five o'clock in the morning, I got, have you got your good camera? And that was f for uh, a reported sighting of an orca attacking some dolphins, which we went out and we, we never found, but uh, that, was, that was what we were going for. And it's worth getting up at five o'clock in the morning for uh, something like that and bringing the good camera. I think the main thing about humpbacks that makes them photogenic is their 
activity levels. They're somewhat like a, a large dolphin. They tend to like jumping around the place. They wave their tails out of the air. They, uh, they hoover along the surface, lunge feeding with their mouths wide open. Uh, they're quite happy to jump right out of the water on occasions. Um, and they engage in this activity uh, called uh, bubble netting or bubble feeding, where they lay a circle of bubbles uh, to trap, the, to enclose the fish, and then they surface in the middle with their mouths wide open. And that's particularly fantastic from a ph photographic point of view because it, you know exactly where, where the whale is going to surface and when. Uh, you know, when you see the bubbles there, you've got about 10 seconds. And, you know, the, the whale will appear in the, in the middle of those bubbles. Now, if you're looking for humpbacks or for any whales, the first thing to, to look for is a lot of bird activity. And if you're out on a calm day and you see lots of birds flying around in a particular area, that probably suggests fish and if there's fish there, you'll start to get dolphins and, and whales if, if they're around. Um, the next challenge is to keeping your camera steady. Um, and the, you know, if you're out in a, a very light boat like a rib and there's even a s slight swell running, you, you, the rib will be moving up and down uh, quite a lot. It's better to be in a big heavy boat once you've found the whales. On the other hand, that's a slower boat and it might be harder to find them in the first place because you can't move around so quickly to, to find them. So you, uh, you, you have swings and roundabouts there. Um, you've got to get close enough to them to get a decent shot. Um, you know, you probably want to be within about 100 metres or so of them. And uh, it, it's not really practical to use a very long lens, you know, handheld on a boat. Uh, it, it can be tricky to hold it steady. Um, if you can get within 100 metres, that's, that's pretty good. When doing any kind of photography, you're constantly trying to juggle three things. The aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO setting. Uh, when you're on a moving boat, it's particularly important that you use a, a suitably high shutter speed that you don't get camera shake. Some cameras have a mode whereby you can set the aperture that you want, say f8. You can then allow the camera to choose the shutter speed to avoid camera shake based on the zoom level of your lens, so it'll change automatically as you zoom in or out, and then the camera will choose a suitable ISO setting. Now, ideally you want to use as low an ISO as possible so that you don't get noise in your digital image which looks a little bit like grain in a camera, uh, in a film camera. However, editing on a computer afterwards you can remove some of the effects of the noise but you can't move any of the effects of the camera shake, so give the high, the high shutter speed the priority. One of the most charismatic of all the great whales, it is no wonder first sightings of humpback whales off West Cork causes such great excitement among photography and whale enthusiasts alike. Their very unpredictability and habit of appearing suddenly and unexpectedly adds to the sense of wonder and awe generated by these fabulously beautiful marine mammals. Next time on Wild West Cork, Irish film director Vivian de Corsi talks about the making of her film Dare to be Wild and emphasises what an important role we can all play in safeguarding West Cork's remarkable plant and animal biodiversity.